Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. I am late to starting a uh, new series I want to do this winter called Terrarium Tuesday. And I decided to just start the video on a Thursday. So, but the, all the future terrarium videos, we'll do them on Tuesdays, do it for a few weeks during the winter time. It's just nice to have something to do inside with the gardens. Also, uh, part the lighting, there was my phone. It's been a long time trying to get that lighting right. And I was like, you know what? Let's just do it. Don't worry about it. There's some reflection, some spots whatever it's okay i have a pretty decent variety different style glass vessels i guess you could call them that i want to plant things into and this is the one i decided to start with there's only so much you can do when you're limited during the winter months with the plants so uh, some of them might get a little bit redundant i don't know we'll see figured just to get things going talk a little bit about some of the structures with the terrariums and then in the future ones just plant them up without all that talk with the structures. I'm trying to keep my hands calm because you can see everything I do in the glass, but I'm a gesticulator. I can't help it. Gesticulator a word? I don't know. It is now. Okay, I'm just going to actually pull that out of the way. Can have a look at some of the plants down here. You know, it's a little bit difficult getting plants in during the winter time, having them shipped to you and look good. So there were some fails from some places I ordered from. Some of these plants are looking pretty sad and crispy, but they are actually looking better than they did when they arrived. So it should be okay. And just getting them planted up into a terrarium is what's really going to ultimately help them the most. That's what's going to get them growing faster, much faster than just leaving them in these dinky little pots, right? I have too many plants to get over here onto the table. Right here, it's mostly just a bunch of syngoniums. Uh, there's a little ficus over there, a ficus pumala, and um, there's a division of a fern I have over here. I'll also do some with some succulents, probably next week or the week after. I don't know. This is just kind of for fun. We'll see what happens. Terrarium's basically just a little greenhouse, a little portable greenhouse. The first ones that I've been able to find, like when I've been reading up on them, were from a Dr. Ward back in, I think it was 1830. He was transporting plants back and forth between Australia and England and needed to find a way to preserve those plants and keep them healthy. They're traveling by ship. That takes a long time. And they're exotic tropical plants. So he created just a little glass enclosure, essentially, that would kind of mimic the biome, which is basically a terrarium specific to the environment of the plant or species, whatever species being kept in it. And that got them across the seas over to England. Refer to those as wardian cases, use them for shipping and delivery. And now they're just fun. Now people just use that same concept just for a good time, being able to keep a little slice of nature in the house. But since the 1830s, terrariums have come a long way. We've learned an awful lot about them. And if you don't know, check out Serpa Design here on YouTube. He's been doing terrariums for years. I think he coined the concept of false bottoms. I'm not sure but I'm gonna talk about that. I'll be doing a false bottom in here. I did a terrarium last year. Uh, it was like a one with a fern and cryptanthus. Looked really pretty. I ended up taking the fern out because it got too big, which I knew it would when I did that video. I'm going to be keeping this in my kitchen near that one. So I have three different styles. Well, I don't know what these are called, but I have three different jar candy, jar, whatever these are called and they'll be in my window and I don't really want to see the layers. Typically with the false bottom, there'll be charcoal, pumice, and then soil. And sometimes that looks really nice, but I don't, I don't, I don't know, I'm not into it right now. So in order to avoid having to look at all that and see the different layers, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of line the sides here with these pebbles and then I'll go ahead and put in my charcoal pumice soil. I'll talk about that as I go. And before I start to go ahead and put the charcoal in there, guys, I just realized this fan has been on the whole time. I'm sorry if that background noise was obnoxious. Before I get going, I want to go ahead and get the charcoal ready. This is just activated horticultural charcoal. I like to give mine a good rinse beforehand because it's usually pretty dusty. I do it in small batches. That way I don't have to like stick my fingers in there and stir it up and everything and then my fingers get dirty and you know, it's just a big old mess. And the principle behind the active carbon or charcoal is that it goes in the bottom of the terrarium and will adsorb impurities not absorb adsorb carbon activated carbon or charcoal pretty similar essentially the same thing the surface of it is very 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 porous and it binds with organic compounds that pass by it 
mostly organic. They think there are some inorganics that it binds with as well. It doesn't absorb, it adsorb. So it's just the surface, that surface area, which is massive. I mean, this is extremely porous. It can collect a lot of nasty stuff out of the water. It's very effective in that manner, but it does have a shelf life. It's going to vary depending on how like dirty your water is and whatnot, but it's not going to work forever. Once all the little pores on the surface are totally filled up and can't collect anymore, then it's done. It just, it's gonna sit there. So it's nice to have in there for a while. It's not a permanent thing. It's not like the terrarium's always going to have this nice defense on the bottom of it, keeping things super clean and pure. With the charcoal, just want to make sure that there's a heavy enough layer in there to make be fully submerged in the water. I don't want this to have water above it, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I wanna get set up to put my rocks around the side first. To do that, I'm just using this piece of old cutting board material here. I'll hold that with one hand while I go ahead and pile the rock in around this side so that the inside's still open for me to go ahead and put potting soil in. Will of course require a little bit more finagling and whatnot as I get it done, but for the most part that's just kind of helping to keep things in their position roughly. After the charcoal layer right above that is just pumice. Pumice is nice and porous, it allows some air exchange, and the main purpose is just that there's a separation between where the water's collecting on the bottom and the soil. That way the soil's not in contact with the water and constantly soaking it up and staying soggy for too long. I'm using a prepackaged potting soil that's made for terrarium use. It's a nice light airy mix. It has some sand in it, some cocoa, some bark chips. I usually like a terrarium mix that has some rice holes in it that usually seems to keep things going really well. It allows a lot of oxygen flow in the soil and it breaks down well also. But I'm fresh out of rice holes, so this will have to do for now. I tried to leave this open in the back so we can see the layers here where it goes from that charcoal and then there's the pumice here and then the potting soil all the way up here. I did forget to mention that it's very useful to moisten the mix that you're using before you put it in because if you don't, then once this is planted up, all that water that you're trying to use to saturate that soil ends up pretty much filling this entire thing up. So if you moisten this first, just put it into a bowl with some water, get it moist, you get it, and then put that in there first, that will work better. Because when you have to water the plants in, it's going to take a lot more water to get them watered in when the soil's all dry. And I did want to mention it. Typically the layering in these terrariums, the bioactive terrariums would go pumice on the bottom, some screening if you want to use screening, and then the activated charcoal, and then the soil. I decided to try things a little bit differently this time just because like I talked about before with the activated charcoal, it's already incredibly porous and has a lot of surface area and uh, I think that that in and of itself should be just fine to have on the bottom. I was thinking maybe having the pumice up above there is actually going to allow a little bit more airflow and therefore anything that needs to happen with beneficial bacteria can happen more effectively down in the water area and the water will be more clean because the only time the charcoal is going to have much of an effect at all on the water is when it passes through it and that's it. Nothing else after that. It just made sense. I thought I would give it a shot just with this one terrarium to go charcoal, pumice, and I did put a little bit of charcoal above the pumice and then soil. There are a lot of different ways to go about doing it. The main thing is just to recognize the function of each one of the properties and use it however you think is going to be best. For example, the pumice has a lot of surface area on it. It's very porous. This allows for a lot of bacterial growth, good bacterial growth growth that is really good for the roots of the plants that helps keep the fungus and everything fed that allows the nitrogen cycle to happen both in the water and in the soil and keep things growing properly. For there to be a proper nitrogen cycle happening within that water, it typically needs to have some sort of circulation. Not always, but there's anaerobic, anaerobic bacteria and you need a mixture of both with the nitrogen cycle. You're not going to get that just with stagnant water. That's why I thought I would rather have the charcoal on the bottom instead of the pumice. Like I said, it's just a little experiment. I don't really think it's going to make much of a difference, to be honest. And then with the pumice allowing for aeration, I figure having that closer to the soil, that that's going to allow it to dry out a little bit more quickly because sometimes I do have issues with them staying wet for just a little bit too long if I should happen to overwater. So a little bit more of a safety net and also, like I mentioned, going to allow more oxygen to flow into the terrarium. Like I said though, this is the most typical order and the most typical way to do it, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just thought I'd try something different. Lots and lots of different ways to go about doing these bioactive terrariums. This is just 
an overview, some different options. Uh, another word of caution, if you decide to use gravel inside these, be careful. Be careful, because look what might happen. Oops, <laughs> it happened. Not the end of the world. I'll just run by home goods and get a new one, but I don't want to plant this up with a giant hole in the side. That defeats the purpose of a terrarium. With the terrariums, you want them to maintain their moisture, and it's really not going to do that with a giant gaping hole right right there, right? That's not gonna work. So I'll have to fix that another time. That's all right though. I wanted this first part of talking about the terrariums to really be more about the setup anyways, not as much about planting it up. And I wanted to collect more decor and stuff to put in there like moss and whatnot. So it, it's okay, it all worked out. Sometimes people will put a layer of screening in between the activated charcoal and the pumice layer that just helps keep the soil from washing all the way down into that charcoal. I tend to not do that as much anymore, mostly just because I usually don't feel like cutting out the window screening, but you can get it in really big rolls at the hardware store. You just want to make sure that it's like something that's poly based and not metal because anything that's metallic is going to rust and that can be problematic for the whole thing. So I will pop this up at the beginning of the next terrarium video and then move on to the next one quickly. I'm probably just going to do a fern and maybe a syngonium, something pretty simple with some rocks and some moss. I'm not going to go very heavy with it. I'm also going to bring this down a little bit further. There's more planting area up here, but I just think it would look better if the surface was down just a smidge, like maybe, I don't know half an inch to an inch lower. I do, I can't just leave this without anything in there, so I'll mock it up real quick. Here's an asparagus fern. They have a lot of nice texture. It will definitely outgrow this. Most of the plants that go in the terrariums will outgrow them. Really have to stick with super dwarf varieties for that to not happen. And then a pink syngonium. I don't know the name of this one. It was just an assorted terrarium plant, but it's really pretty. I love the foliage on it. And then there's this ripple peperomia. Really like the texture on that ripple peperomia. Isn't that pretty? And then when all's said and done, I'll make sure to put some moss in here and some rocks. You'll see. I'll make sure it gets done at the beginning of the next video. You guys been doing some fun terrariums? Yeah, it's winter here and uh, that's just, it's when I get going with these sorts of things. I like to get these in the house. It's so hard not being able to go outside and garden. Being able to do just these little planters, these little terrariums during the winter time, it just makes the gloominess <laughs> a little bit more bearable as counting down the days till spring. Or I actually, I may go ahead and uh, end up fixing this one in this upcoming vlog that'll be out after this video should be and i'll keep it short and simple y'all already saw all this stuff so i'll just go to the store buy a new one and plant it up how's that sound hopefully okay because that's what i got to do <laughs> comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody let me know what's going on with your house plants and in your garden i will post updates on instagram i people have asked about my instagram i use my stories more than i use my feed but i'll try and get better about posting things to my feed as well but the, all my social media is linked down below in the description of the video can you you can see everything that's happening there with my hands and don't forget the whole youtube thing if you could like the video it makes a big difference for the channel and i appreciate it so thank you and subscribe as well and hit the notification bell that way you know new videos come out so the kickoff to terrarium tuesday a little bit of a mess but that is pretty on brand with the way things go around here not everything's perfect but it's all right stuff happens no big deal let me know some of the things you guys do with terrariums there are lots of different methods for everything this is just kind of the most broad and basic beginner way to do things having the carbon in there or charcoal i'm sorry i'm used to aquariums so i'm used to calling it carbon but in horticulture it's charcoal it's Slightly different, but not really. They do the same thing, activated carbon and activated charcoal. That's neither here nor there. I'm saying people have different methods, different things they do. What are some things you do? Tips, tricks, suggestions? Put it all down below. Let's all learn together. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Would you focus? There we go. And of course, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.